It's a uh, nine o'clock sharp now. I invite Narendra Bhandariji, uh, constitutional area leader, glad to give his opening remarks. Good evening, each and every one of you. I'm really, uh, I would say, impressed by your sustained interest in learning more and more. I know most of you are, uh, I would say, not a professional trainer, but more than professional trainer. You are, uh, I would say, icon of Lionism. You spread Lionism. You are the ambassador of Lionism. And your business more really, uh, I would say, impresses us, not only impresses us, but it enthuses us to give you more and more and also learn from you. Similarly, in this episode of Refresher 2.0, we have our third presentation today, and Madhinder Singh Chandyok has had a good preparation. He has uh, shared his presentation, uh, um, I would say, trainer, and they were saying that it's going to be a really uh, a very, very learning experience today. Uh, wish you all the best, all the participants. And Maninder, we are proud of you. Okay, so please get set ready uh, to welcome uh, uh, today's uh, fascinator LCIP FDI and Maninder Singh Chandra. Okay, we are going to today talk about storytelling as a tool of training. Should I start? Yes, yes, over to you, Maninder Singh. Yes. Please go on. Wonderful day and really wonderful for me, the new technique, storytelling, I'm going to give insight to you. What a wonderful opportunity given by you to me. So as per routine and as per the system, what I have to introduce myself. So let me introduce myself to so my you. Self introduction. Since it is a storytelling session, so... The grandfather, grandfather is telling to grandson what he is telling. My son, let me tell you the story of my very good friend who is a living legend. Who is that Dadaji? His name is Maninda Singh Chando. To the best of my knowledge, he lives in Indore. You must know that Indore is known for what? It is the cleanest city of our country, Dadaji. Dadaji, you have told that he is a living legend. Why you said for him? My son, he was from very struggling family. He is a self-made man. From an early age, he started doing small, small works to earn his livelihood. I am very much impressed with his discipline, dedication and time management. After doing post-graduation in chemistry, he was employed in a government organization. And I knew that he was raised to the position of an already a sales manager. Later on, he started his own business of pharmaceuticals and chemicals in Indore. You know, he is a Lion member. Lions Club is the biggest NGO in the world. I remember that he joined Lions Club somewhere in 2006. He almost did all leadership institutes of Lions. Now he is an author, poet, motivational speaker, trainer and life appreciation coach. Daily he is on live Facebook and speaks to add value in life. Dadaji, what is this life appreciation coach? He believes that we must appreciate what we have. We should appreciate small, small acts of human beings to remain them motivated. We should push all to attain their goal. He is very ambitious. He wants to speak worldwide and spread. Today he is speaking on storytelling. Now open your laptop and connect with him and see how good he is in speaking. Let us come my son. Thank you, Dadaji. Thank you very much. The story what you have told about Maninder Singh Chandok, my father. Storytelling is a great training tool. My son is very much impressed with that. Everything, whatever we do, whether it is a storytelling, whether it is a webinar, seminar, any class, something, anything, ultimate object of ours is to leave impact how we have to leave impact on this. And today also, my endeavor is to leave impact on you that how the storytelling can be a great training tool for all of us. Now, what are the session objectives? My, dear, uh, my friend, that I am more practical in this session instead of theory. Because theory is available everywhere. 
in the textbooks, theories are available and on the Google, on everywhere theories are available. But I want that I should be more practical to you. So let us discuss that how many types of training tools are there? That storytelling as a training tool, how it can be mechanized? Then what are the mechanics of storytelling? What is takeaway and what will be the impact of today's session? And what can be the impact of storytelling when it can be used as a training tool? So first we will discuss what, are the, what types of training tools are there. I'll call upon the, my friends who have joined here that please put in the chat box that how many types of training tools are there. And uh, Nagaraju sir, if you can give me answers, I'm not able to see here otherwise. I'll do that. In case anybody writes in the chat box, I'll read them for you. Yes, yes. Put in the chat box, please. Yeah, I think uh, somebody has written games and activities. Okay. It is Chandra Shekhar from 320D. Okay. And Balbir Singh Ji Sani says that examples. Okay. And also expertise. Uh, examples, expertise. Yes. And uh, uh, Halabi says active presentation. Balbir Ji also says experience. experience. And Chandrasekhar again says discussion, leading, brainstorming. And Vikas Chitmulwarji says voice is very low. So I, I think, I don't know if it's my voice, perhaps. I'm not sure. CG Vaghi says facilitation. Activity. Jagdish Pura yes. activity. Yes. So, so many, so many points are there. So we'll see that uh, what types of training tools are there. First of all, there is a technology-based learning. You must be agree, everybody. Then simulators are there. On-job training, we put on the people on the job and then train them. Coaching, mentoring, what we are doing. All of us are doing coachings. We are mentors of so many people. So many people are mentors to us also. Instructor-led training, whatever our Lions courses are there, institutes are there, they are instructor-led. Then films and videos. A lot of people say that films are a very good message carriers and message giving. Videos are also very much equally important. And then case studies. So these types of training tools are there. Then how the storytelling can be a good training tool. Now this we will discuss today. You know, in the my early days, when I was very much, you know, a child, my grandmother told me one story. The message what given by her is still in my mind. What is that story? The story is of, of a fox and stroke. They were very good friends. They were living together, playing together. But fox was very clever. Everybody knows. Fox was very clever. Still fox is very clever. One day what happened? Fox called stroke for a dinner. Stroke came well prepared. She was hungry, thirsty. She wanted to eat food in that, uh, at that dinner. The dinner was served on the dining table. Fox was very cool and calm. He was enjoying. He called the stroke on the dining table. Stroke came on the dining table and when he wanted to, when she wanted to eat, she saw that the food is lying on the big utensils, flat utensils, which stroke could not eat because of her big beak. Because of the long beak, she could not eat anything. She was upset. She wanted to eat something, but she could not. And Fox was very clever. Fox was eating everything, laughing. And he, uh, he was thinking that he had given a dosh to the stroke. Anyway, stroke went back to the house. And one day, stroke again called the fox for the dinner. Fox came prepared for the dinner. And that day, the stroke given the dinner in the long utensils, in a narrow mouth utensils, in a very deep utensils, which fox could not eat anything. That time, my grandmother told me that a selfish act backfires sooner or later. You cannot be selfish all the time. This short story acted as a strategic learning tool that time to me, 
and it leaves an impact on children's brain till till today also so these these short stories were there which were available to us by our grandmother grandfathers and so many people those are giver giving us the values to our uh, life storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world this robert mackey is a professor he has said that storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world friends let me very cautious today because it's a very important discussion what i am going to have with you i am not going to be best theoretical i will be more practical with you and each and every word have its own meaning storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas your ideas into the world the storytelling approach creates right retention high retention and recall it creates very high retention and recall value is there when you just like like me i still remember that story what my grandmother has told me still i know that verbatim whatever she told me that time that what was the who was the fox and what fox has done what stoke has done everything i still remember so it has it creates a high retention and recall value it is memorable and sticky learning you memorize you memorize it whenever any story comes to you whenever any story uh, you learn that memorized by you you keep it in your memory for a long time it's a big learning because that memory plays a big role time to time and gives you the insight of your in day to day life it's a great source of knowledge and wisdom really it's a great source of knowledge you can take a lot of knowledge from them because you are connected with that story you are totally engrossed in it to get the knowledge and wisdom it gives new ideas and click rethinking this is a very important word rethinking you are thinking something you are thinking something but you start rethinking you start reevaluating you start rejoining you start re worshiping it so gives new idea and click rethinking story resonate with people it's very important it it involves people it goes with people and it motivate and inspire all the all the time the stories whatever stories are there stories are always very you know a very interesting part of the learning the it motivates and inspires it help people connect with a topic you know it's very important this is a very very important line what i am telling you because we are the trainers we are a coaches whenever we see that we are giving training sometimes we see that uh, people of the uh, audience of the back benches they are not comfortable because they don't know what you are telling they they cannot connect with you because you are telling something different their perception something different they want to learn something different you want to teach something different so when you both cannot go together so their attention get diverted and when the, their attention get diverted you get disturbed when you see them you get disturbed we get disturbed and this is the actually a big problem of all the trainers and audience because we are having a different perception of training so these stories they help people connect with a topic it they have a power to influence and move the story have a power to influence because once you influence your audience once you influence your um, people who are joined you they move towards they move to you their attention moves to you and they keep connecting with you more and more story enhances the learning experience ultimately whatever we do still we are sitting here we are also want to learn something you are investing 45 minutes today with me so you want to learn something i also want to learn from you lot of things so story enhances the learning experience now what are the mechanics of storytelling this we are going to discuss now uh, in a narrative there should be a beginning there should be a beginning a strong beginning then we should reach to the middle and then the end should be a take away or a impact it should leave on that so these three things we have to concentrate on storytelling first the beginning should be powerful the middle should be moving 
and the end should be either to either uh, give some take away or leave impact on the audience how to tell a good story now we are coming on this mechanics uh, in the good story you have to stress on some main character you have to identify some good character in anything uh, once upon a time there was a king once upon a time once uh, lion was residing in a jungle like that so we are concentrating on one particular suppose we are trying to concentrate on a king we give all emphasis on king we give all importance to king we enhance its personality we we value its opinion we value their feeling so all this create a good story so you have to identify a main character you have to enhance its personality you have to keep line is personality you have to see what opinion he is giving in the story and what feeling you can put in the what emotions you can put in your story that also counts very much story ingredients are what context of story is what what are the challenges in between in the story how you can overcome with that what are the winning and failures you are going to discuss in the story and what will be the again and what will be the impact what will be take away that is the ultimate learning you want to serve i want to serve after this session to all of you you storytelling as a part of a course or as a course itself now mind it this is a very important point which i am elaborating you you storytelling as a part of a course or as a course itself you know i am going to demonstrate you after some time follow the traditional storytelling method traditional storytelling method is what when you are engrossed with your people when you are engrossed with the listener when you are playing with your emotions when wherever you want to uh, you know uh, fell down you have to fell it you have to go as per the traditional storytelling method and include a learning objective always story should carry a learning objective what, what what we are going to learn what message we are going to give by this story that is very very important you have to create a mystery and suspense somewhere uske baad kya hua pata nahi kya hua uske baad you have to keep create a mystery suspense you have to make it count don't make them wait don't don't destroy your don't make it your whatever your flow is there don't disturb that flow keep keep going on because story once is started no it should end nicely and use detailed imaginary imagery you have to create a picture in front of your uh, audience you have to create like it's happening in front of you the story should be like that it is happening in front of you the things are going in front of you the things are people are moving in front of you that imagination should create in the mind of the people now it's a storytelling session as i said you that i am not going to tell you more more theoretical these were the only important points which were used to which was important and which are supposed to be discussed now in my case in my case what i go about in this because if i preach something i should practice it if i say something if i talk, if i uh, i am able to talk on health i should first cautious about my health if i am going to talk about your storytelling it should not be it should not be only a show here for 45 minutes i should must preach it i should must practice it and when i practice i practice on myself in corporate training you know we all are doing lot of things i am taking a example of corporate training i am a ceo and managing director of my company it is a corporate organization storytelling is a medium that can be used in new hire training when you, you when you hire the people when you hire the employees when you hire your partners when you hire your associates in your company your main endeavor is what that they should retain maximum time in the company they should devote themselves in the welfare of the organization they should connect wholeheartedly with the organization 
what not when once you they came to your organization they have some ideal in their mind suppose i am there in my company uh sometimes i am a ideal for them because they know about me they know that they are in the safe hands if they join my company they are in the safe hands i look after them uh, respectfully i look after them uh, beautifully i look after them comfortably financially everything i look after them so they rely on me they keep giving importance they keep giving respect to me so how i involve themself in my company that is the main thing in this because when you go with the story with them when you involve yourself with them when you connect your life with their life they align the new hire with the company's vision instigates a feeling of motivation to be a part of the story whatever story they are going to create in life whatever they are going to create a story in their future they align with that now let us take example my organization is a gsc pharmaceuticals it's a pharmaceuticals we are a trading and um, trading and manufacturing the pharmaceutical products it's a company i start with this i always give them that what i was and what i am i am from a very struggling family as my grandfather told you i am from the very struggling family i uh, we have risen from a very me to type of uh, life and i was i am the eldest in my family so i was supposed to do some business from the very early age in at the age of 17 i was employed in a small shop of that a cloth shop cloth selling shop i was employed in that that time my ambition was to become a salesman of some very good shop of jabalpur it was it is in jabalpur jabalpur is a, a city in madhya pradesh it's a district place i was resident of that place so i my my endeavor was to be a good salesman because i was so limited resources i was having so i had no ambition i was thinking that i should be a salesman of some big shop so that was my standing that time suddenly and slowly when i got my degrees when i done my post graduation after that i was applying here and there then i got a one government of india organization and i started my career as a trainee medical representative in that from that i started my career and for 22 long years i was in that company i was risen to the position of all india sales manager i was second in command i was doing very well i have opened new areas i was doing really wonderful job in that company but one fine day the company was ordered to shut down i was not knowing what is happening i was asked to leave the organization i was asked to resign i protested why i should resign what what my mistake is what i have done wrong to the organization i have given my blood for the company for 22 long years i am putting up in goa this time my children are studying in schools we i am residing in a rented house where i'll go from here because i was not having any other experience but nobody know nobody realized on my pity position that time i was supposed to resign i was struggled i was struggled then established then displaced then reestablished this all i involved in a story so i was kicked off by the my managing director or by the government from this company i was not knowing what to do i came back to indore we started and came back to indore i was dumb and dwarf i was not knowing what to do i started applying in other companies i started applying here and there but when you have already worked for 22 years in any organization in any culture it is very difficult to make yourself comfortable in other culture it was very difficult i got two companies i worked there for some time but not possible for me to continue in that company then i started to i was thinking to do my own business i started my small business from that time it is a matter of some 18 year 18 years old some in 2004 i took a small rented shop in a medicine market of indore from there i started in from there 
this neck tie was never taken out from my neck till that but for trading this tie was not required so i used to get, take out the tie put on the wall sweep the my uh, shop and sit in that for one long year i was absent minded what i should do what i what is done to me why god is not why god is unfair to me i was asking question to me that what i have done wrong what management gurus are saying that if you do this if you are disciplined if you are doing your job very well you will be comfortable but what has happened to me i this question i was this question i was asking to myself but i was not getting answer then again when the clouds are there some silver linings are always there so slowly slowly people were knowing me they came forward given me little small small orders and i started doing some business and after that rest is a history rest is a history after that i made myself in a long way i done a lot of business in this so these all stories when you tell them when you when you put yourself as a hero in front of them they involve yourself they involve themselves with that after that now they will ask you that how you Pranet, how you get a courage of comment this. on the chat box uh, where it yes. says i am not getting this uh, check this bro it says i am not getting this this is a small comment i said let me share this with you what what happened jagdish pur rohit yes sir purohit ji you want to say something anand ji yeah there is a there is a, a comment on the chat box uh, yes. it says i am not getting this i thought let me inform you about this so so is some listening problem some voice problem something what so should i continue sir whatever you told about yourself now just a total story yes i was not getting it but means mujhe ye samajh mein nahi aa raha tha ki iska ye story telling session se kya relevance hai ye story telling session se lena dena ye hai ki aap ko samajh mein aayega ki kis tarah se story tell ke aap usko involve kar sakte hain apne sath aap story bata kar kis tarah se logon ko bata sakte hain Uh-huh. you told your own story yes i have told yeah. my own story as yeah, an example yeah, yeah. as yeah, an yeah, example yeah. as an okay, example okay. of this that how you can involve people with, in front of you with you oh, so oh, oh. so i was i told them you know each and every value i am underlining here that yeah, what yeah, yeah. i have done how i have i how i have fought with me what was my challenges how i overcome that because i have already told you that when you start your when you start the hiring people you have to train them you have to train them the storytelling is also at one technique by which you can train them and for storytelling instead of going to the theory i am sharing my example with you so our they, our own they, experience thank you very much so i have told them that i was writing a my personal mission statement you can see here that my personal mission statements are there my in 1982 1983 so by all this showing my ability to them i am i am cultivating a confidence in front of my people who are getting engaged with me so after that i have built up my gsc pharmaceuticals gsc marketing gsc agrotech maninder homestay ms chandok and associate a lot of things i have built up and still i am going and still building in that so by this after that you have to show to your people that whatever products you are having how it can be a uh, useful to them we have we have chosen that time a product sodium hypochlorite solution sodium hypochlorite is a strong bleach and it is a uh, oxidizing agent so by this i told them that how the strong Uh, bleach and the sodium hypochlorite can be useful when this product was available in the pandemic time when this was a uh, useful all over the country so the recognition and application of that product was uh, open to all 
so this is all application of training what i have shown you and what are the importance what are the recognition everything you have to tell to your people then soft skill training is there can anybody tell me what is the soft skill training here what we can do what we are thinking about the soft skill training soft skill training put in the chat box please maninder ji please repeat the question what is the soft skill training in this context in storytelling context what is the soft skill training yeah for instance do you think it's uh, something that relates to uh, public speaking skills does it relate to voice uh, modulation what does it relate to what's this? yes uh, stanley says life skills jagdish yes. body language very good alba says self development skills yes yes body language self development skills um, eye contact narsimha raju says eye contact yes and uh, narsimha raju says communication skills and halabi yes. says eye contact there are so many skills are there but when you talk about the story one minute when you talk about the story of the people who attained height in your company that soft skills in the storytelling context when you are telling story then the storytelling as a training tool when you are talking to your people when you are talking to your employees you have to tell them that from your company the people have taken what height what you have developed the skills in you what you are doing these days what is your next mission all these things comes in the soft skill training so this is all about the storytelling any question on this i welcome because i want the question answer session should be there every time we miss it but question answer session should be there Manindar ji, from your experience yes. of training uh, so many people, uh, uh, can you give any example or any experience where you have, uh, you know, narrated a story to drive a particular learning point uh, for the participants to make their learning more impactful or powerful? Any of the example or experience? Yes, that's why I was giving this example to you. That when I was taking a training in a corporate some few days back, so. i was to tell them that how you have to write a personal mission statement you know this is a very important exercise personal mission statement we usually teach in uh, in all the training so when the personal mission statement i was narrating to them the story i was narrating to them so one participant stood up and he said sir you have written a personal mission statement any time so i was really fumble that time i said yes i have written by the time by by the way that time i was carrying one a small diary with me which was having a personal mission statement of that particular year means this year so i have shown him shown to him after that that boy came to me to my office he said that i want that you you told me that you were writing personal mission statement in 82 83 84 85 like that so that time i have shown these all clips to him that this is the personal mission statement i was writing so by your own by your own example when you teach them when you when you ask them so that will last long in their mind now personal mission statement is a very important topic everybody knows but how to inculcate in their mind so that is a storytelling method i have done it with them uh, maninder ji there is a question from sakib rahim ji sakib ji do you like to ask the question or shall i read it out who who tell me thank you mohinder first of all i must appreciate you after such a long time i have seen you and you have given a very nice presentation on storytelling and i am yeah, yeah. always fond of storytelling in my training sessions uh, uh -huh. the question uh, which i sometimes face by myself is okay, do you think during the storytelling the trainer uh, is more of a concern uh, basically uh, uh, is trying to uh, 
arose the emotional cords of the recipient and asking them to see the things emotionally and uh, by doing so what we are doing is we are replacing the information with narrations and demanding them to respond in an emotional way so do you think uh, this is a right way to for the or it is the right do you think is it isn't it the right of the recipient to be more informative rather than to decide the things on an emotional basis that is sir, my question. sir very good very good question is your uh, i always say when you touch the brain of the people they will either forget it or retain it but when you touch the heart of the people they will never forget it as i said you that you have to go in storytelling traditionally if if the demand is there suppose you are talking about something very very emotional question a very emotional situation you you have to go with that you have to go with that emotional situation if there is a requirement of crying you have to cry if there is a requirement of laughing you have to laugh because until unless you do this you cannot connect with them if you don't connect with them that will be again a same story or same teaching what we are doing every day people will come sit with you and then go away nothing will happen but but as i said you that one personal mission statement when i was teaching i was very emotional because that time in 82 my what was my age my age was only 21 years so in that 21 years when i was writing a personal mission statement and whatever i was writing each and every word was carrying an emotions when my participants who were sitting with me who were uh, my audience when they gone through with that two of them is still in contact with me and taking the training of writing the personal mission statement so my win is this that i have done a one thing that i have told them i have given a correct direction to them that what is to be done so your correct your question is this that you have to go with them information is there you cannot hide information information always be there but if it is blended with emotions it will definitely last long with the in the heart of that person thank you maninder ji uh, leo stanley has a question i think leo you are unmuted now yes uh, hi sir uh, your session was really good my point is i am given a topic on self confidence okay so how can i use the storytelling techniques in my presentation especially on this particular point your topic is self confidence yes self confidence that's how, why how how the storytelling can be involved yeah that's why i was telling self confidence comes from where from your own example or from the example you have to show to them of anybody who are known to you or who are near to you so when you give the example when you show them that yes you can also reduce the weight suppose you are talking on the health ground so how you can get the self confidence yes i have reduced the weight by walking by by uh, doing exercise by doing yoga that self confidence when you give them because that you have taken in your head already you are doing that you are doing every day then only that person will believe on you they yes he can also get the advantage of yoga or exercise or whatever you want to give them uh leo uh, in case i can add something to what maninder ji said uh, yes. first uh, decide whether you want to tell a story or not in case you decide to tell a story you have to do a little research and find the most appropriate story for that context once you have decided that you have to check how much time do you have and that time fits into that or not after that you have to tell your story in such a way that it must be impressive what elements go into making a story impressive is what you need to decide as a trader and once you know how to make that story impactful creative interesting appealing i think you can narrate that uh, anand kumari has a question i think anand kumari you are unmuted now yes sir good evening uh, it was a very good wonderful presentation manidar ji hearty congratulations thank you very much thank you very much my question is that if we are given a presentation for varna how many minutes should we allot allocate for storytelling 
one hour yeah. i cannot go for a storytelling i have to start with the beginning i have to narrate so how many minutes should i to take for a storytelling in the beginning i have told you that entire course became a story you can convert entire course as a story there is no problem in that you you take you have to make that course more interesting so how you have to make the interest how you have to create interest in the uh, in the mind and the heart of the people so you make your presentation like that so that it create interest so story can be told in the entire session no problem in that just to add on anandar ji yeah it could also be and just to give the answer in the continuation from what you said to anandar kumari it is also situational we need to say that what is the subject of that one hour number 2 who is the audience number 3 what points you want to drive what is what you want to what is the objective which you want to achieve by giving that story do you want to create a safe and open environment in the beginning so that you drive a story or do you want to establish yourself because we always say that you must earn your right to speak or do you want to in that case you may probably like to share a couple of stories about your own life or any point which you want to drive which is related to that subject so based on that you can decide that what story and how much time you will consume on the same thing thank you it depends sir like depends. you had one thing malinder here yes uh, whenever you had small small stories to come out of an uh, session objective one thing you should take care that before telling the story you don't have to tell why you are telling the story otherwise the interest in the story will be lost yeah it has to casually come and at the end of the story you can say this is the learning if you give the learning in the beginning then people will lose interest in the story that is what i feel uh, yes, you should yes, take care right. of that yes you are right narendra ji right. what you are saying it's called front loading in the technical language it's called front loading so there is no need to front load the participants with what is the purpose of the story you know because the whole surprise at the end comes out with a great way thank you narendra ji for that point uh be- yeah. before invite sakib rahim ji for his question there is a small comment here uh, mona shade says my experience is always begin with a story to build up the tempo and end the story with a long lasting impression uh, well, where is mona said in the entire episode she is hiding <laughs> her face she is hiding her face sakib ji do you have a question you can unmute yourself Uh, uh, it is not in question. Thank you, uh, Nagaraju. Uh, then maybe um, Manita, oh. have you finished or do you? Yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank This you. This is all. Uh, yes. I have a few questions. Uh, Anand, Manita, and anybody else can answer there. Very, I think, uh, just to make the point a little more clearer. Uh, when do you think is the best time to tell a story? Beginning, middle, or end? Anand, Raju, I can answer you. Yeah, please, please, sir. See, there is no fixed rule when you need to say the story. It will depend on the subject. It will depend on your audience, and right. it will depend on the you know situation. Right. Whenever you Thank feel you that uh, the session is going dull or the people are not interested, you can come out with an interesting story. Thank you very much. Uh, my next question is uh, between autobiographical stories and uh, stories. which do you prefer why anybody so if you are someone stories like stories of abdul, our own lives stories of uh, others uh, nagaraj if you are someone like ap jabdul kalam then autobiographical autobiographical story can always sell <laughs> anand you have a problem with your uh, connectivity i think perhaps you are at the okay. airport yeah yeah uh, is it audible now i am saying nagaraj you yes. manindra ji can you answer that yes yes uh, yes please Anand, please go ahead. Okay, I am saying that if you are A P J Abdul Kalam, yeah. that autobiographical story can obviously work for you. Right. <laughs> Manindra ji, one question. thing about storytelling, we have a myth. We have been taught right from the first leadership program that you start with a story or you end with a story. But it is not necessary. You can start with a story, but the story has to be very short. otherwise you lose the main space where you need to deliver the subject so you have to be very careful storytelling is a very powerful tool at the same time it is a very risky tool you know many times we find speakers giving stories which are irrelevant 
yeah. you know they just entertain people but at the end of the day they deliver nothing so though we have been taught many times storytelling this thing that thing but you have to be very very uh, i would say very very planned when you want to say stories thank you sir thank you very much my next question is uh, in case you uh, to narrate a story uh, between short stories and longer stories short means maybe 1 minute and 2 minutes and longer are 5 minutes and more uh, which do you prefer any reason for that or do you for instance if you have a choice between narrating two stories of 2 minutes each and one story of 5 minutes which do you prefer why i always prefer first short stories short stories we prefer short story because short stories uh, maintain a tempo after that between in between small small stories you can give a message also perfect very good Good. Anand, do you have any uh, opinion on that? So I think it's again a situation, but more or less, I think short stories are always impactful uh, because the people uh, are able to relate it in a much better way because it get, ends up uh, it it gets over soon. But what is important here is to practice the story uh, before you share. Okay, every word, uh, the pauses, the punch lines, everything has to be very well practiced. Then and then only you are able to create impact. If you are thinking on the stage. it will not create the impact thank you anand uh, lain chandrashekar says a uh, one minute stories are better narsimha raju says depends on the topic and nm hegde says small stories are always better and srinivas salike has a question i think srinivas please unmute yourself cg burge also has a question cg you can also unmute yourself yeah uh, srinivas first srinivas you can unmute yourself yeah i have been muted sorry i am not with the video because i am some other place uh, let me tell you you know like if i am asked this type of question like you know like the length will not matter when you speak it always depends how do you convey that message is more important you have to speak full because you can't say that i have to speak only 1 minute or 90 seconds story you can't cut it off so you have to complete but complete also should be in such a way that it should really get in uh, related to the topic what you are speaking which is most important which narendra bhai has told told us see resonating what we are talking is there are different types of stories but how do you take your story to them is more important how do you convince them is more important by your speaking so these are the things that we need to keep in mind when we are talking about any stories thank you shrinivas uh, there is a comment again from mona shet she says always try to connect your story to the local incidents and the local stories are always better cg you can unmute yourself and speak now very true mona good comment cg please cg we can't hear you i hear you right now no your voice is breaking and perhaps you have connectivity issues today okay, connectivity connectivity cool. issue is throughout india do you mind writing your comment in the chat box cg sorry yes i will do that yeah anand you are very kind anand please yeah yeah so i just thought of sharing one concept with each one of you and my flight has started you know boarding so i need to rush so there are three levels in storytelling the first level is storytelling where you tell the story the second level is story showing where you tell a story in a way where you are actually showing the story the opposite person start visualizing every part of the story with a second level and the third level is story selling means you you share the story in a way that your concept your product your service or your point a training point a learning point which you're driving is sold to the participants so each time when we are working think about these three levels storytelling story showing and story selling thank you very much thank you anand i think cg has commented in the chat box that what she meant was visual storytelling i think that's a very very practical tip that she has given it's not just telling the story but it is dramatizing the story so the whole effect lies not in the story itself many times many effective stories lose their Uh, effect because i mean the narrators are not good so it's narration how you make it i mean life like how you bring drama into that how you make people visualize that story 
So whether it's yeah. about, I mean, who you are with the audience, whether it's children or adults, I'm sure people love to listen to stories when they are dramatized. Uh, that is one point all trainers can keep in mind when we go to training programs. Perhaps it's not only just choosing the right story, but it is, I mean, presenting it the right way. Thank you very much. Any other comments, please? Nagarajo, there is a good yeah. comment from CG. Uh -huh. She says that you can use the same character throughout your session in different situations. That could be also a good way of, you know, story, preparing story with the same character throughout yeah. the sessions, three, four students. Uh, do you think, all of you, uh, that humor uh, is an important part of uh, stories and training programs or can we have stories without humor too? Which do you prefer? Why? Anyone? Uh, humor can uh, be a... Humor is a must and it connects to people. Yes, of course. Yeah. Sure, it does. And... Yeah, it's a, it's a connector. Uh, Habib Alba says in the during the opening, uh, perhaps stories perhaps work best. Anyone else would like to comment on that? Do you think humor is a compulsory element of every story that we narrate? Our stories without humor also work wonders if they are narrated properly. Uh, somebody says, I think Anil Toshnivalji says, story should be new and it should not be stale. It should not be an old, already known story. And Saki Brahimji says, humor is a very tricky and it must be handled very carefully. And Anand Kumari says, humor acts like an icebreaker. Yes, it does. And uh, your story should not hurt the sentiments of people. That's what uh, CG says. Yes, it must not. It must, it must not be aimed at any individual's uh, sentiments. And Chandrasekhar says it depends. Yeah, it depends on the context, what level, what kind of audience you have. Uh, CG again says nothing about religion, politics. And I add anything sensitive, anything delicate should not be uh, the, the theme of the story. Uh, please avoid uh, sensitive issues. Then Sanjay ji says uh, she, he agrees with that. And Jagdish Puroji says it definitely works wonders in case you have a little humor added to the story. Uh, Mandira Chanda says humor is not compulsory, but uh, the message is important. So in case you have a good message to convey, as long as the message is conveyed appropriately and effectively, humor is not absolutely essential. And Sandesh Ji says it should not be too much dramatized. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, I agree with that. So some people have excessive body language uh, that works against the uh, spirit of the training program. Uh, Vagis Vaidyan says humor sometimes is repeated in sessions without even knowing it. And Ayam uh, Alabi says it's about your company. It should be an example to follow by a team. I think that's where the comments end. Uh, Manidharjit, would you like to add anything before we uh, stop here? No, I think, sir, this is a good discussion we had. And uh, we should... ask you about humor, I would like to add one thing. Please. Many a times when the speaker uses humor on himself, Mm -hmm. I think it goes well with the audience. Yeah. So some kind of self-abuse, self-praise, self-appreciation can be a cause of humor, can be a source of humor. I'm sure in case you know the art of telling the story without hurting others, but at the same time, I mean, making the... See, the whole idea is not telling the story itself in our context. In our context, how to make our training programs more effective. As long as that purpose is met, as long as that objective is realized, I think it's good if you have a story and then uh, it certainly wakes up some people, it wakes up, it, it arouses interest and it makes your training program interesting. So uh, once you are given a topic and once you are identify uh, the presentation and also you are getting ready, also think what stories can you carry with you, personal or non-personal, subjective or objective, short or long and as long as you can connect it to the story and I mean if you are equipped with the right story and if you know the art of storytelling I think your training program will certainly be very successful of course the story becomes successful only when you add the other elements to it it's not the content or the theme itself it's your voice it's your modulation it's a drama that you put into it it's the way you use your um, 
limbs, the way you move about the hall, I, it, it's the way you bring life into your story. I think, I mean, all of us must train ourselves to become better storytellers. Uh, that's the, I think, the idea behind today's presentation. Uh, maybe uh, we have another two or three so thank minutes. You. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nagaraju. Thank you very much, everybody. PID Naren Bandari ji, Anand ji, and all the audience. Because we had a very constructive dialogue. That is very important. Because we always run short of time and we miss this session always. Uh, means we only utilize a small time in that. But today we had a very nice dialogue in this and we have gathered so much information. Thank you very much once again. Uh, I've just got a few more comments here. Anil Toshnival ji says, uh, human must not hurt. Chandra Shekhar says, audience are students. If the audience are your students, uh, humor is, uh, it, it works wonderfully. Uh, uh, then again, Alabi says, the story must be attractive and fruitful. I think there must be a message in that. That's what she means. And Leo Stanley says, voice modulation matters a lot. And Anil Toshniwal has a question. How is more important? Uh, Anil, do you like to speak? Do you like to explain uh, that question? Where are you? I can't locate you. I'm sorry. Uh, if you please raise your virtual hand, it will be easy for me to identify you. Anilji? I don't know if he's there. Unmute yeah, yeah, yourself. Yeah. Unmute yourself. Uh, yeah, Anilji, I have unmuted you. Mm. What's your question, please? No, no. Unmute yourself, Anil. He is done. Hello. Uh, my point was in a story that how element is more important. See, what is what matter is there that is important, but more than that, how you present it and how you relate it with the topic and the message what you want to communicate, that element, how element is very, very important. That we should take care of. Uh, uh, Dr. Anilji, I think what all of us, Anand, Maninder, I, and Narendra and what all of us meant was that sometimes a very, very interesting story also can fall flat yeah. uh, mm -hmm. if it is narrated by somebody who is not an effective story relator. And yes. in the same way, uh, even, even in a very, very stale, lifeless, life-looking uh, story can become absolutely impressive in the hands of somebody who knows the art of storytelling. So it all depends. It may be sometimes a story that's a narrated a hundred times, but still when somebody tells it to, we all enjoy that. So it depends on mm -hmm. how it's narrated more than the content itself. So that's what we meant. I think it's yeah. time for us to uh, come to the end of the program. I invite Uttam Jha to propose vote of thanks and also invite us to the next program, which is going to be presented by Uttam Jha. Uttam, I'm unmuting you. Uh, actually, we had a good, uh, let's say that session today. And uh, first of all, may I thank Lion Manindra Singh Chandogji for his quite uh, good preparation as well as she delivering the subject matter very in interesting way. And uh, that's why I would like to congratulate him as well. Congratulations, Manindra Singh Ji. Thank you very much. At the same time, I would also like, like to thank Narendra Bhandari Ji for initiating this uh, great idea and as well as supporting him by others like Ananji and Nagaraju at the same time, uh, our Sriniva Salikeji and Shiji, she is also responsible for here. And that's why I would like to also thank uh, them all for their kind efforts and as well as you see taking this idea in a bigger and effective manner. And uh, by saying this now, may I invite you all to the next next session of our uh, refresher two that means uh, actually on the subject of the art of asking questions this is also one of the most required skills or idea that as a being a line leader or any type of uh, let's say let's say that the trainer that uh, should have this type of also quality. Those, that's why we are going to discuss about it in, in next hour session that is going to be held on 24th of uh, May, uh, same day, same uh, Zoom platform. So that's why I would like to welcome you all to that session. And in that session, uh, I have also prepared a small 
uh, invitation video to you all. Please watch it. And uh, till then, I would like to say good night and goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Itam. Thank you. Uh, Narendra ji, would you like to add anything before we close? Narendra ji, would you like to add anything before we close?